Daniel was brought to Babylon from Israel as a young boy by King Nebuchadnezzar. When the king took over Israel, he took with him the most intelligent and handsome young men from Israel to help him at his palace. Among these were Daniel and his three friends. Daniel was very handsome, honest, and intelligent. After a training period of three years, the king chose Daniel and his three friends from all the other young men to help him in his palace. Over time, Daniel earned the king's trust and affection as he helped the king solve many problems and worked very hard for the king. He was known for being wise beyond his years, and he was completely dedicated to his work. After the time of Nebuchadnezzar, another king ruled Babylon, and then another. All the kings who ruled Babylon trusted Daniel and depended on him for carrying out many tasks. Over the years, Daniel earned a very good name among the people of Babylon. He was praised for his intelligence, kindness, and hard-working nature. He understood the problems faced by the people and made wise suggestions that would help them to find a solution. He was a very devout believer of God and prayed three times a day without fail. When King Darius came into power, he was so happy with Daniel's services that he gave him all the responsibilities for running the country. The other senior counselors and ministers of the king grew jealous of him as they had to follow Daniel's orders. They met with each other and talked about this often. Babon and Samuel were two of the most senior men in Darius's court. They did not like the idea of the king's growing affection towards Daniel. They feared that the king would favor Daniel over them. The king was placing more and more responsibilities on Daniel now, and he consulted only Daniel for solving the issues in the kingdom. The king felt that Daniel had the best possible solution for any problem. The other senior members of the court were becoming afraid that they would no longer be needed by the king and they would be thrown out. The most senior members of the court were Babon and Samuel, and they shared the same worry, how to get rid of Daniel. One day, Babon and Samuel met at a wayside inn to discuss this problem. This Daniel is becoming even more powerful with every passing day. The king only listens to him now. We have been serving the kingdom for so many years, and yet the king does not even ask for our opinion on anything. If this is the case, I am certain the king will remove us from the service of the court. We will have to go back to the streets selling pots to make a living. Quite true, my friend. We have to do something about this. It is a matter of our survival. We must find a way to remove this Daniel from the king's court immediately. It's not easy, Babon. He has a great reputation. The king will not simply remove him because we say so. We have to be very careful. We must destroy his reputation. I've observed him very closely for some time now, and it's next to impossible to find any fault with him. He's an extremely devout man and prays to his God three times a day. He's very popular among the people as well. Wait, you said he prays three times a day to his God, right? Yes, everybody knows about this. Why? I think I have something we can use against him. If my plan works out, we will have to never worry about Daniel anymore. What is it? Tell me! And so, Babon and Samuel devised a plot that day. They returned to their homes, agreeing to meet in court the following day. The next day, Babon and Samuel arrive at the palace to meet with the king. They talked about various issues of the state and how happy the people of Babylon are with the king and his rule. They praised the king on his bravery, his sense of justice, and how kind and merciful he was. The king was very pleased with what Babon and Samuel had to say. Then Samuel made a suggestion for a law to be passed. My lord, the people of Babylon are indebted to you. The kingdom is thriving and its fame has reached the far ends of the earth. This has all happened only because you are the king. No other king has achieved so much for their kingdom as you have. 
I think that we need to celebrate this occasion and give the people an opportunity to show their gratitude to you. Your words please me, Samuel. You are truly a loyal subject of Babylon. What do you suggest we do? Oh, my lord, I'll explain. We have a suggestion that for the next 30 days, all the subjects of Babylon will praise and pray to no other god or man other than the king of Babylon, you, King Darius. Yes, it is a great way to find out who are truly loyal to Babylon and its king. We suggest that a decree be passed for the next 30 days. Nobody will pray to any other god other than King Darius. I think that is a wonderful idea, Samuel. You really have proven that you are worthy of your position in my court. But I must first discuss this with Daniel before I go further with this. Your Majesty, I don't think that would be necessary. We have discussed this with all the senior counselors of the court and they are in agreement. Daniel would without doubt be overjoyed to have this law passed. Why waste time over discussing it again with Daniel? We have prepared the decree for you to sign on, Your Majesty. Here's the scroll. The king believed that Daniel was aware of the law. However, Daniel was not consulted about this, and so he was not aware of it. Babon had sent two guards to Daniel's house at the time that he offered prayers to his god. As soon as the soldiers saw Daniel praying to God, they immediately moved in to arrest him. Daniel, didn't you hear of the law passed by the king? What law? What have I done wrong? Why are you arresting me? A new law has been passed by the king stating that no citizen is to worship any other god other than King Darius himself for 30 days. I am not aware of this. Very well, take me to the king. The soldiers arrested Daniel and took him to the palace to be presented to the king. The king heard the news of Daniel's arrest and he was very sad. He realized that his senior counselors had been plotting against Daniel all along, but he felt helpless as the law had been passed. Nobody could be exempted from the law once it was written, even the king himself. When Daniel was presented to him by the soldiers, he felt heartbroken. Samuel and Babon were also present at the court. They were happy that their plan was working out as they hoped. Daniel, what have you done? I thought you were aware of this new rule. Do you have anything to say to defend yourself? My lord Daniel has defied the rule of the kingdom. This is as clear as daylight. Several people have watched him offering prayers to his god. You cannot pardon anybody who breaks the law. It will not be considered righteous or just. Daniel must face punishment. He should be thrown into the lion's den. I have nothing to say, your majesty. I am a servant of the kingdom, and I am ready to face any punishment that you give me. I have no choice, Daniel, but to command that you be thrown into the lion's den. I hope that the god you pray and worship will save you. As soon as the king commanded, Daniel was taken away by the soldiers to be thrown into the lion's den. The king was very sad that he had to send Daniel to his death. That night he could not sleep. He was saddened by the fact that his most favorite servant would be ripped apart by the lions. The next morning, as soon as the sun rose, he jumped from his bed and hurried to the lion's den. He approached the den hesitantly and called out to Daniel hesitantly. Daniel, can you hear me? Did the God that you serve and worship save you? Answer me, Daniel, are you alive? There was silence for a couple of moments. Yes, your majesty. And then Darius heard a voice that made him jump with joy. It was the voice of Daniel. Yes, your majesty. May the king live forever. I am unhurt, my lord. The lions did not even touch me. My God sent an angel into the den who shut the mouths of these lions. My God has indeed saved me, for I am innocent. Soldiers, open the mouth of this den at once. Remove Daniel from the den at once. 
The soldiers removed the huge boulder that closed the mouth of the cave. Slowly, Daniel stepped out of the cave. There was not even a single scratch on his body. It was truly a miracle. Daniel, your God is indeed true. He came to rescue you in the most hopeless hour. I am sorry that you had to endure this. Come, let us go to the palace at once. When news of what had happened to Daniel spread around the kingdom, the people were amazed and stunned. Babon and Samuel realized that their evil plan had gone wrong. When the king arrived at the palace with Daniel, he ordered the soldiers to throw Babon and Samuel into the same lion's den. The lions pounced on them and killed them instantly, breaking their every bone before they ate them. The king was overjoyed that Daniel was back at the court. He reversed the old law and made a new one, stating that everybody in Babylon must pray to Daniel's God, the God who performs miracles to help those who serve him. And so, Daniel continued to serve the king and execute his duties faithfully for a very long time. He continued to pray to the true God until he died.